You got the verse? All right, six, chapter six, verse 114. What does it say? Uh, so, O Prophet, should I seek a judge other than Allah? Well, he is the one who has revealed for you the book with the truth perfectly explained. Mm. Those who are given the scripture, knowing that it has been revealed to you from your Lord in truth. So you do not be one of those who doubt. Beautiful. So the part that I want you to focus on in this verse is that it says that this book is perfectly explained. You saw that part, right? Yes, and it is. All right, and it's, it's perfectly explained. All right, I want to give you another verse that says the same thing. You know, says the same thing. Because I, I like to show that the a consistent thought, right, before I show you where it's inconsistent. Okay. Go to now to chapter 12, verse 111. Go to chapter 12. Let me know when you get there. There he is. And go to chapter 111, the very last verse. 100, um, uh, verse 111. Yeah, I am. Yeah, uh, you got it? All right, so what does it say? Uh, in their stories, there is truly a lesson for people of reason. This message cannot be fabrication. Rather, it is a confirmation of previous revelation a detailed explanation of all things mm. a guide and mercy for people of faith beautiful now the part i want you to focus on again is where it said it's a detailed explanation of all things you saw that yes sir beautiful so it's pretty consistent the Quran is perfectly explained and the Quran is a detailed explanation, not of some things, not of the things that are important, not of the things that matter, but a detailed explanation of all things, not some things, all of it. Okay. Now let's be reasonable. I'm reasonable enough to be like, well, the Quran is not saying that it's going to teach me how to work a microwave or fix a refrigerator. That's not what it's talking about. Okay. But whatever the Quran itself talks about in the Quran, it's detailed and explained about it. Is that reasonable? Yes. All right. Beautiful. So now here is where the discrepancy is. Go to chapter 3, verse 7. It's actually a pretty famous book, a uh, famous verse. What verse? Verse 7. Chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 7. Yeah, okay. What is say then? Has revealed to you, O Prophet, the book, which some verses are precise. They are the foundation of the book, while other are exclusive. Elusive. Those divine, defunct hearts follow the exclusive. Defiant, yeah, defiant hearts, right? Or deviant, of deviant course. hearts. I think it is. Uh, follow the deviation. Yeah. Versus elusive. Uh, so elusive. Yes, yeah, elusive, right? A L L U S I V E. Uh, yeah, 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 it is. Mm -hmm. uh, seeking to spread doubt through their false interpretations, but no, none 
grasp their full meaning except Allah. Mm. As for those well grounded in knowledge, they say we believe in this Quran. It is all from our Lord. Bro. But no will be mindful of this except people of reason. Beautiful. So just to be a little clear for uh, in mind, it said, as you said, that there in it are verses that are precise, as you saw. Those are the foundations of the book. And others, other verses, not entirely clear. Okay, so there are some that are clear, some verses that are clear in the Quran. Some verses are unclear in the Quran. And only Allah knows the meaning of those verses. Not even the people of knowledge know those verses. But they, the people of knowledge just say, it's all from God. We accept it. It's all from God, period. And that's it. Right? So there's some clear verses and there's some unclear verses, right? Uh, yeah. But the other verses, the other two verses that I showed you, what did they say? I forgot. It's okay, I got you. Chapter 6, verse 114, it said that the Quran is perfectly explained, right? Yes. And the last, the other verse I showed you, it said it's a detailed explanation of all things, not of some things, of all things. Yes. So if it's a detailed explanation of everything, then there's not going to be anything unclear in it, right? Yeah. But chapter 3, verse 7, what we just read, says that there are some clear verses and there are some verses that are unclear. So those verses that are unclear are not detailed or perfectly explained. They're unclear. Uh, well, when you uh, put it in the perspective, uh, this book had to predict what was going to happen 1,400 years ago. So it's still predicting what's going to happen in the future. That's why some verses are not clear enough. Yeah, but there are some verses that are not even about the... It doesn't matter. Whether there are verses in the Quran that are unclear, this means that the Quran is not detailed and explained about everything, which is a contradiction. Like I said, it's uh, it, c it can't be a contradiction because Allah has to pro predict what we were going to do. And he, of course, already knows what we're about to do, so he already wrote it. My brother, and it's not about pr predicting verses. Whether, they're, whether the verses are predicting or not, these verses are unclear. While the Quran says that everything in the Quran is clear. So you, you can't have them both. You can't have where the Quran says everything is clearly explained. Everything. While at the same time, the Quran says, oh, well, actually, there's only some things that are clear. Other things are not clear and explained. That's a contradiction. You can't it can't be both. Well, if you put it that way, you can say that's a contradiction. I disagree with that. Okay, let me show you. Let me just uh, show you that it's not what you're talking about. Because you're saying, oh, well, there's, you know, verses that predict the future. And so those aren't clear until the future comes to yeah, pass, right? When that, uh, when those verses, uh, when these things happen in those verses, it will be clear. Okay. For all mankind. It will, will it be clear in the Quran or not? Uh, yes, it, it will be clear in all of it when they fulfill uh, those verses. Okay, those so. Verses. Uh, all right, so let's see here. So I wanted to use an example. Go to chapter 17, verse 1 for me. And we're going to see if this verse is clear. Because it was, it was uh, you know, you guys have a, a narrative with it and a belief. It's about the night journey. Now let's see if this verse is clearly detailed and explained about everything. 17, 1 you said? Uh-huh. Uh, glory uh, be to the one who took his servant Muhammad 
Ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. It doesn't say Muhammad. That's parentheses. Don't, don't, don't read the parentheses. The parentheses is when people add into the text. Don't read the parentheses. What do you mean? So, Muhammad, I shouldn't say Muhammad. Not in that text because the, is, is, is Muhammad in brackets in that verse? Come on, you're looking at it. Is it in brackets? Is it? Does it have parentheses at the at the front and the end of it? I I have, I have to look at it. It's in the Arabic. Oh yeah, in the Arabic, Muhammad's name is not there. Uh, uh yeah, it it is not there. Exactly. So they're adding that to the text, which it, and it doesn't belong there. So, so let's make sure make get get a make sure you get a translate or read the Arabic or a translation that is more true to the Arabic. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> glory be to the one who took his servant mm -hmm. by night from the scarred mosque mm -hmm. to the farthest mosque. Mm -hmm. from who surrendering uh, we have blessed so that we may show him some of our signs mm -hmm. he alone is all hearing all see Be beautiful now first question now remember we're testing the quran to see if it's detailed and explained about everything now this isn't predicting the future this already happened right this isn't predicting the future. So here's the first question. According to the verse, who is the servant? Uh, the servant is uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where does it say it's Muhammad? Uh, it's... Logic. So... <laughs> yeah, but who else could it be? Read verse two. Okay, hold on. And we gave Moses the, the scripture and made it a guide for the ch children of Israel, starting, do not take besides me and any other trusts of our reefs. So how do we know it's not Moses? Verse, the very next verse mentions Moses. How do we know it's not Moses? Uh, because it says we have uh, gave Moses the scripture. Yeah, I know. He's a servant. Wait, is is Moses not a prophet, a, a messenger of Allah? Yeah, 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 he is, but I, so, I didn't mean to say it like that. Yeah, so he is a servant of Allah, right? Uh, yes. So how do we know that this... Verse 1 isn't talking about Moses when Moses is mentioned in verse 2. I mean, you got to go into the deep meaning of it. I, I, I started reading the Quran like a month ago. A I'm month ago? Like, I haven't fully finished it. Man, I'm trying to get you off the Quran. I'm trying to show you that you don't even need to waste your time. I'm trying to get you off of it. Do you see how the verse is unclear? Uh, what, what do you say? Do, don't you see how the verse, how verse one is unclear? It doesn't tell you who the servant is. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Now, here's the second question with this. It says that they took the servant from the farthest mosque, I mean, from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque. This is my question. What is the sacred mosque? Where, where is that? Mm -hmm. Where is that? According to the verse. Uh, isn't the, uh... Does the verse tell you where it is? Uh, no. Nope. The verse is unclear about where the sacred mosque is. Let me do a, Let me do another one. What about the farthest mosque? It says from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque. Does it say where the farthest mosque is? Where is that? Does it say? 
You can't expect an exact location. Why that. not? The Quran says it's detailed and explained yeah. about everything. You expect uh, people... F no, no, no. You expect uh, God to write you a whole location of I, the mosque where it was? I expect God in his book where he says it's detailed and explained about everything to not be vague about anything. Not be unclear, because that's what he said. He said it's clear. Everything is clear. That's what he says. Everything is clear and explained in detail. So I expect to see every detail. I expect to see clarity. I, I don't expect to have to ask anything. I, I, I expect him to tell me who this servant is. I expect him to tell me where this sacred mosque is and what is that. And where the farthest mosque is and what is that. Because it claims to be detailed, explained about everything. It's not my fault. That's what the Quran says. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that is uh, the same way with the stories of the prophets. Uh, they, they aren't, like, uh, detailed in the Quran. They it, are, like, uh, separate uh, in those verses. You're getting it. You're absolutely right. Now, the n notice... These are verses and stories in detail that have nothing to do with future prophecy or prediction. These are just stories the Quran talks about, right? And things it mentions, and it's not clear on these things, not fully. It's, there's a lot of ambiguity. There's a lot of unclearness. Like You got to get these details going elsewhere. The Quran doesn't explain all this stuff. Well, but, but you, you got to put them together. Like You can't. You gotta... Yeah, you can. You can just put all the pieces together. and then Where? Perform. The Quran doesn't have these pieces. It doesn't. Yeah, it does. You have to... There are a lot of uh, clear stories of the prophets uh, that were mentioned in the Quran. Yeah, like How here... Do you think people for, came up with for, for example, there's a story about Jesus and his disciples where, you know, he asks his disciples, who's going to be helpers of Allah? The disciples say, we will be helpers, right? So, okay, cool. So they're going to help Jesus spread the message of the gospel. Here's my question. Who are they? Who are these disciples that are helping the, the, the Messiah, the word of Allah, the spirit from him that he cast down to Mary, the, 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 the prophet, the result, the miracle worker, the one who's born of a virgin. He picked disciples. So it's important to know who they are. Who are they? They are his followers. Who though? Who are they? You expect to know the exact name? Yes, I expect to know who they are. You want to know why? But you want to know why I expect that? Why? Because the Quran says it's, it's perfectly detailed. detailed. Yeah, it perfect... You got it. You got it. So if it's not perfectly detailed, then that's a contradiction, right? Look, uh, hear me. If the Quran was like settled in like uh, each uh, prophet has has their own like story and all the details were mentioned and as you say, all the logic was there and exact details of everything was there, then it would be like more like a history book instead of a holy book. No, no, no. Uh, it could be both. It could be both. That's what the Bible is. The Bible is a holy history book. It gives us all the stories of the prophets in detail. It tells us about them, their fathers, where they're born, the areas that they preached, you know, all this kind of stuff, who they engaged with, who were their scribes, who followed them. Like we even know Prophet Jeremiah, for example. We even know the name of his scribe. His name is Baruch because the, the Bible is a historical holy book. It's about the history of Israel and their dealings and their trials and their times and God redeeming mankind and his revelation. It's both. Uh, I, I, let, let me ask you a question. Uh, is there any other sources than the, these Bibles that has historical evidence of them? 
Yeah, like you, you, you got, you got, you got traditions. You got rabbinic traditions, and you got uh, early church traditions that have writings from priests and scribes and rabbis and stuff like that that contain information about kings or people or prophets and stuff like that. Yeah. You, you think the early churches had the, the Trinity in them? They definitely did, but now you're switching the conversation, bro. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So my point is, uh, there are uh, you can't just base that off like the Bible, uh, like the Bible I, I'm not, has a lot of versions. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not basing nothing on the Bible. I'm the, the only thing that I'm doing is talking about the Quran and its inconsistency. That's what I'm showing you. If the Quran claims to be perfectly detailed about everything and we find out that it's not, then and that's a contradiction, right? Right? Nah. We gotta be honest with yourself, bro. Be honest, man. The way you read them in the orders, there is a, a meaning behind every word. That doesn't help. And you. every word is exactly detailed to have a, an absolute meaning. That doesn't help you. Behind every it, super deep meaning of the Arabic, it, it, I still don't know who the servant. I still don't know. Who, I still don't know who the servant is. I still don't know where the farthest mosque is. I still don't know who any of Jesus's disciples are. Because the Quran is not detailed and explained about everything. So if the Quran says that it's detailed, perfectly detailed and explained about everything, but it's not, then the, that's a contradiction, right? If it doesn't fulfill what it says, yes, then it's a contradiction. Thank you. But it doesn't. The thing with it, with it that everything that it says is absolutely truth. Right. So is it absolutely true that the Quran is. is perfectly detailed about everything? Is that absolutely it true? Is. Huh? It is. Okay. It is. So you should be able to tell me who is that servant in chapter 17, verse 1 from the Quran? At this point, you were just asking. Uh, we could take an, uh, the same example as you asked. We could ask who gave uh, a servant the mosque <laughs> absolutely we could do that too very good who the heck is the one who took his servant to the mosque we can we can ask that question you're right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but see that was me that was me being gracious like i the, see there, there's levels to where i can grant something but if I wanted to really be that guy, I can do that. Who who is that? Who's the one taking the servant from the from the sacred mouth to the farthest mouth? Who is that? I can legit ask that question. Now now see now you now you doing it. Doing what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Logic. <laughs> now you're doing it. Now you're part of the God Logic team, man. Welcome. Well, Welcome. Thank you for working with me. I yeah. appreciate that. Any, anybody that uses Logic, bro, you're welcome. Anyone. Yes. It's, it's an, it's an open you. field, you know? So I'll ask you again. And I want you to be honest with me. Be logically honest with me. Yeah, sure. When the Quran says... That it's perfectly detailed about everything. Is that absolutely true? Be honest with me. Well, if I'm being honest with you, if I read those verses in their order, and I find out more about the story as I read further in, it, it does not lie. I agree. Not... You know what? I agree with you. If elsewhere in the Quran, it gives you this information, 
You're right. It still gives you these details in the Quran. You're absolutely right. So how about this? How about we do this? How about we start with chapter 17, for example? Let's read a little further and let's see if it tells us who the servant is. 17. Yep. We read verse 1. We read verse 2. Let's let's keep going. Let's see if it eventually tells us who the servant is. Wait, hold up. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I'll wait. Uh, 17.3. Yep. Keep going. Let's see if it finally tells us who the servant is. All descendants of those we carried with Noah in the ark. He was indeed a grateful servant. Uh oh. Uh, so is it Noah? And uh, no, it does not say that he is the servant. Mm. So no. So okay, let's keep going. Maybe it'll tell us. We. And we want that warned uh, the child of is the children of Israel and the scripture. You will certainly certainly cause corruption in the land twice, and you will become extremely arrogant. Uh, again, it does not mention your servant. Hmm. Uh, and the first two warning uh, would come. To pass, we would send against you some of our servant of great might, who who would uh, revenge your homes. This would be a warning fulfilled. Now there, that mentioned servant. <laughs> Good dreams, Paul. Good night. Mm. Did you find it? Yeah, it was three verses away. So who's the servant? Uh, our servant of great might. We have we sent against you some of our servant of great might who will revenge your homes. This would be a warning for food. So we still we still don't have the answer. Look, dude, if I memorized the whole Quran, I would probably easily answer that. I promise That's you, it. I promise you right now, and this is the reason why I even use this as an example, is because nowhere in the Quran. In all the 114, maybe 116, depending on if you ask Ibn Masood, chapters of the Quran, does it tell you who that servant is? The Quran never answers that question. You have to go to the Hadith. It's nowhere in the Quran, bro. And any Muslim, any Muslim would tell you this. And tell you that I'm right about this. Any honest Muslim, at least. Yeah. But, wait. In the Quran, it says that the Prophet Muhammad himself does not speak from his own will, but from God's will. What does that got to do with this? Uh... That he is the servant of God. It does not mention that on any other prophet. Yeah, it does. For... It, mentions, it mentions a lot of prophets are the servant of Allah. Yeah, but it mentions it that about Jesus. That they, it does not say that they speak of uh, other than their own will. So what? Muhammad this this one verse one verse one. From the will of God. My friend, verse one doesn't say anything about the servant speaking from his own will or anything like that. So verse one, uh, verse that that detail is literally irrelevant. So for the Muslims who don't understand, 
because uh, I got asked a question. You have the answer in the Hadith, so what's the problem? The problem is, guys, is I'm showing that the Quran is not perfectly detailed and explained. It said the Quran says that it itself, the Quran, is perfectly detailed, explained about everything. The Quran is not the Hadith. The Quran is. So I don't need the Hadith. I shouldn't need the Hadith. Whatever the Quran talks about, it's perfectly detailed and explained. I shouldn't need the Hadith to give me an answer and fill in the holes and the gaps that the that the Quran leaves. So this is where the problem is. If if the Quran didn't claim to be perfectly detailed about everything, this wouldn't be a problem. Books have ambiguity. That's fine. There's going to be some clear things, some unclear things. No problem. But the fact that the Quran says that everything in it is clear and detailed and explained, I got I got to hold the Quran to what it says. Like logic. Hmm. I want to also use some logic since I'm part of your logic club. Wait, but before you do, before you use your own, I got to see if you can be logically honest first. Yes, yes. Uh, if you go to uh, the Quran uh, in chapter 42 of verse 51. That This is going to answer the question? Uh, it, it, it does. It does. All right. So uh, chapter 42, verse 51 is going to tell us who the servant is. Uh, yes. All right. I'm trusting you, man. Yes. Don't get kicked out of the uh, club. Uh, you know the, that uh, Muhammad is the prophet who who the Quran was revealed to in the cave by Jubil. You know that, right? Um, no, I don't. I heard that, but I don't know if that's true. But nonetheless, is this is this what helps? Yeah. Okay. Forty two fifty one. It is not given to any human being that Allah should speak to him unless by inspiration <clears throat> or from behind a veil or that he sends a messenger to reveal what he wills by his leave. Verily, he is the most high, most wise. How does this tell me who the servant is in 17.1? This tells you that the messenger who could not be been any other than Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, uh, who could speak other from, from uh, the will of God. Because this says nothing he about Muhammad. His own will, he would, uh, he would not be able to. This doesn't say anything about Muhammad, nor about the the night journey, bro. Yeah, but when was re the Quran revealed, and who was? Who cares when the Quran was revealed? This doesn't tell me who the servant is who was taken from the it, farthest mosque to. Exactly, tell you who the servant is. It says it is not given to any human being that Allah should speak to him. Unless by inspiration or behind a veil, or that he sends a messenger. Wait, wait, which, which of the servant uh, was? Uh, this doesn't even mention a servant. It doesn't mention a servant. Yeah, yeah, but uh, let's forget about the servant. Uh, the well, will of God. Why are we forgetting about the servant when my only question is who well, is that well, servant? Well, well, this has to do with the servant. But, but listen to me. The Quran was revealed uh, six hundred years after. Uh, uh, Isa or uh, Jesus, uh, you're out of the club. Yes, you're not. You're not uh, using your logic. Who do you think, other than Muhammad, uh, could, could have been revealed to? If you say that he is not the servant, if uh, this chapter this, chapter seventeen is not talking speak. about the is not talking about revelation being given to the servant. Chapter 17 does not mention anything about revelation given, being given to that servant. Come on, bro. Wait. I'm giving you a chance, man, but you're, you're running thin. You're out the club now, but I might have to move on to the next person. I'm not, I'm not the logic of global, please. Yeah, I think you're out of the, you're out of the club, man, because you're not using your logic right now. <clears throat> uh, yeah. 
Jesus. So can you just can you just admit that the Quran does not tell you who the servant is? Can you just admit that so we can be honest and move from like we don't have to hang on one point so long. If you're honest, we could have been past this. I am being honest. I, I am being honest. The thing is, I, I can't be honest with you if I haven't read the, the whole Quran. I can't be honest because I haven't re uh, fully read it. After I fully read it, I can tell you my honest uh, response to that. Mm. That I haven't fully read it. Got it. So if it, if it comes to you then, and you find out that actually the Quran does not tell you who the servant is, or that the Quran does not give you the details or the names of the Jesus' uh, disciples, then you'll see that the Quran does not fulfill what it says, right? That it's perfectly detailed about everything. Wait, let me ask you this. What does, uh, does it matter uh, whether it was revealed the name of the disciples or not? How does that affect uh, the Quran? Uh, anything in the Quran? Because the How Quran, does... because the what is it? What have I been repeating that the Quran? What's the verse I've been repeating? The yeah, Quran is what? It's supposed to be detailed, but beautiful. If... So if it doesn't have details, then the Quran doesn't meet its fulfillment that it says, right? Yeah. Okay. So if it doesn't have the details of who the disciples are, the Quran falls. Yeah, but it's not only about the disciples. Uh, the Quran teaches uh, almost everything about life. Well, I, it's life. not. It doesn't say that it's detailed about some things in life. It says it's detailed about everything. So if it's not detailed about who the disciples are, then the Quran is false. 